Hi everybody, it's still summer 2025 and to take a short break from further improvements to our ray marching shader, this time we'll create something really simple. We'll use the Voronoi algorithm, which we know from several previous tutorials, but we'll map it onto a sphere. So we'll end up with something like a slightly strange planet or a dead star. So let's get started. I assume this tutorial will be shorter than usual, since we'll be copying more than half of the code from the original Voronoi shader, but as usual, we'll start with a new scene into which I'll add a correct and assign a shader material. So let's do it, right clicking on the scenes folder, create new scene, it would be user interface, and let's call it for example, Vo Sphere. okay? and right click the root node, add child node and add a color act, which I'll set to the black color, my default, and in the layout section transform, let's set the full HD dimensions, 1920 by 1080. Okay, and we need to scroll down to the material section and set a new shader material, click it, and add a new shader, which is called VO uh, Sphere GD Shader. The mode is canvas item as usual, and I'll put it to the shaders folder and create and click again to open it in the shader editor. And as always, we'll simplify the code that Godot generated for us using the template by deleting everything except the fragment function. So I'm deleting the vertex function, and I'm deleting the light function, and I'm expanding this panel so we can see more of the code. Very well, we can start coding. I'll begin by copying and briefly describing a basic Voronoi pattern. But for that, we'll need some basic uniform parameters, so I'll add them to the code now. As we know, the resulting effect is animated and has some color, like we can see right here. Uh, so we mainly need those values. And of course, the screen resolution to account for the aspect ratio. So let's do it here. Uh, uniform Vec2 resolution, and it starts at uh, Vec2, the full HD resolution, so 1920 and 1080. Okay, the second one, as I said, would be the color. Uh, sorry, they're supposed to be equals. Okay, uh, uniform color would be Vec3 RGB format color with a hint source color, so we can get the color picker in the uh, inspector, and let's start at red. Okay, red, green, blue, very well. And finally, the speed of the animation. So uniform float speed with a uh, hint range, and the initial value I'll set to one, and uh, a range would be from zero to, let's say, 10, and the step point zero one. Okay, so as I said, I wouldn't. It wouldn't make sense to write again what has already been written in an earlier tutorial. So as I said, I have the relevant shader right here, and I will copy this part uh, of the code from it. I mean the function hash two two and the function Voronoi. Let's copy and paste into our new code. Great. So uh, the function hash22 is basically a generator of pseudorandom vectors that we use to animate the movement of individual cells. As for the Voronoi algorithm itself and the Voronoi function, I explained that in detail in the corresponding video. So if you are interested in the specifics, I definitely recommend watching it. I've included a link to the video in the description of this video. 
here i'll just make a small change in the original function the animation speed is set to 0.5 so i'll replace it um, that now with the speed parameter speed okay that's it now we can write the fragment function to display let's click back to display um the basic pattern first i'll shift the origin to the center of the screen this isn't actually necessary for a standard voronoi shader but it will be important for the final sphere so that it appears nicely centered for the same reason i'll also adjust the aspect ratio to ensure we get a regular sphere instead of an ellipse then i'll change the zoom factor to show more cells and finally we'll assign the result of the Voronoi function to the final color so let's do it i'm scrolling down to the fragment function which is currently empty and let's write the code back to uv is uv minus 0.5 so this is the movement of the coordinates origin to the center now the aspect ratio recalculation uvx is multiplied by resolution x divided by the resolution y okay then we need the zoom factor let's for the time being make it a constant so uv would be multiplied by for example five and finally, uh, let's display the Voronoi uh, pattern, assigning it to the color variable, which is vector 4. And it would be the result of Voronoi UV and multiplied by the color. So uh, although we get the float value from the Voronoi function, if we multiply it by vector 3 color, the result is vector 3 as well. And finally, the one for the alpha channel. Let's wait for it. Okay, so we have basically the Voronoi pattern on the plane. But how do we turn it into a sphere? First, I'll prepare two more parameters that will let us control the radius of the sphere and the scale for displaying the cells. Let's scroll up to the <coughs> uniform pattern section and write them. Uniform float radius with a hint range and the radius will start at 0.5 in the, uh, the range of course let's make it from uh yeah from 0 to 1 and 0 0.01 as a step and the uniform float uh, scale again with a hint range a hint range and scale would be five the initial value just like we have the constant in the fragment function right now let's make it from 20 uh, from point 0.1 to 20 and again the step point 0.01 okay and now for the code scrolling back to the fragment function and i'll start by deleting the last two lines since we won't be needing them delete it so there will be nothing displayed and uh, we can continue we need to move from the plane into 3d space so instead of the two-dimensional uv vector we'll switch to a three-dimensional vector p for point its uh, first two components will correspond to the uv vector and we'll calculate the third one using the formula for spherical coordinates or more like its simplified version it would be like this vec3 p is vec3 and as i said first two components are the uv vector and now square root of uh, radius uh, times radius uh, radius so it's to the power of two minus uvx times uvx minus uvy times uv why very well so this is the first part and now of course we need to incorporate the scale factor so let's divide it by the scale factor okay so this part of the code might remind you uh, of the formula for the distance between two points in space 
uh, which is which in simple cases can be shortened using the length function. For this shader, I slightly modified the formula and at the end divided by the scale parameter to get the correct size for the individual cells. Besides that, it's necessary to normalize the resulting vector based on the value of the third component, this one. So we divide the first two components of the vector P by that value. And to make it on just a single line, we can divide the vector by the vector. So it's divided by vector 3. And as I said, we want to divide first two components by the third one. So divided by P uh, dot Z, P dot Z, and the final one just by 1. So it's not affected at all. Okay, and all that's left is to get the value from the Voronoi function and display the result in the expected color, just like before. And we'll do it like this. Vector 3 result is Voronoi, and this time not UV, but P dot XY, first two components, and multiplied by the color uniform parameter. And finally, color is vec3 uh, vec4 uh, vec4 result and one for alpha wait for it uh sorry what 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 result okay there was a typo very well let's display uh, the whole picture and look at that the result is very similar to what I showed at the beginning, but a few improvements are still needed. We definitely don't want the area around our sphere to be displayed in the same red color. So we'll fix that using the smooth step function with appropriately chosen parameters, which uh, will also give the edges of the sphere a slight blur, making it look, look better. But first, we need to know the distance of the current pixel from the center. Since we know the center is actually the origin, the, this simple line is enough for that. So before we create the result, let's do this. Float dist for distance is length of the UV vector. OK. And now the smooth step function. To illustrate more clearly, we can show the result this function gives us if we use it instead of the Voronoi function. So let me just rewrite this. I will delete that and write up the new code. Smooth step of radius uh, minus 0.1 to give it some edge, then radius and dist wait for it that looks good but actually we want the exact opposite result so that we can erase what's outside of the sphere using black pixels not inside so let's adjust the code and it will be very simple we just uh, subtract the smooth step result from one one minus smooth step and the bracket Okay, that's correct. So all that's left is to multiply the Voronoi function, <laughs> Voronoi function by this factor. And it's very simple. I'll just add it to the start of the result uh, calculation. Voronoi, uh, Voronoi of p dot x y eh. multiplied by this. Wait for it. Great. We have a sphere on a black background with slightly blurred edges, which further enhances the 3D feel of the final effect. So we can try changing the individual parameters in the inspector. Let's open shader parameters. And for instance, yeah, sure, return. we can change the color to make it anything we want. Uh, let's just grab it. We can change the speed. Now it's moving a lot faster. We can change the radius, something like a fade in, or if we are closing to the to a planet in space, or of course we can change the scale of the Voronoi pattern. 
All right, everything seems to be working. So what's left? Yes, as usual, we want to be able to set a transparent background. This time, we won't rely on pixel colors since we have black inside uh, the sphere as well. So it will be easier to simply set transparency for everything outside a circle of a certain radius. A simple toggle will come in handy as the last uniform parameter scrolling up to the uniform parameter section and let's add this uniform bool uh, uh, let's call it transparent and set the initial value to false okay and we'll rewrite the last line here it is so the instead of just one we will add this so first it needs to be transparent and we want the distance to be greater than radius and i'll add uh, i'll subtract point 0.05 in this case it should be transparent zero or let's keep the one value opaque okay so now when i turn on the toggle we should see that everything outside the planet is transparent Okay, uh, by the way, I determined the constant 0 0.05 through trial and error and testing. Of course, you can change it to something else or even define an additional uniform parameter for it. And with that, we are finally done. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope I managed to make this video at least a bit shorter than the others. In a similar way, we can map other procedurally generated patterns or even ready-made textures onto a sphere, although not all of them are suitable for spherical mapping. Anyway, thanks again, take care, good luck with your projects, and I'll see you in the next video.